Good morning, grade nines. Today we start a new unit. We're going to go away from our algebra, polynomials, and powers and roots, and we're now going to move into the scale diagrams, uh, enlargements, reductions, and this is called similarity and transformation. Now, you're familiar with transformations because that's the reflections, translations, and rotations that we've done since grade six. So that's something we're going to be doing a little bit later, but we're going to be doing that with more detail now. So we're going to start with what's called similarity. Now, if you take a look at these two diagrams right here, you'll notice something. How are they different? Well, it's very, very obvious that these two things are, they're different sizes. Now, how are they the same? Well, they, they're the same in that they have the same proportions. Each gear here is the same increase to make it larger. Right? Now, to make you understand the term, uh, the, uh, the idea of proportions, let's just take a look at this one right here. So if I had this one, I'll shrink it down so it matches, kind of like matches this one here. Okay. This here, these two right now are proportional. Right? The length to height or the width to height on this one is the same ratio as this width to height. Now, that means that these are proportional. If this one looked like this, and you can you can quite easily see that all of a sudden now we got a problem because it, it doesn't look right. It's not the same diagram, uh, but the the width to height here is now different than the width to height here. So what we say here is that this one here and the large one are not proportional. They don't have the same proportions. This one here. This one and this one have the same proportions. Their ratios are the same. So let's take a look at some measurements here, OK? If I wanted to measure these to find out whether or not this one and this one were um, proportionally the same, I'd have to measure um, the width on each one. So I grab, I'm going to grab your, you know, I'm going to grab my video, my, sorry, my, my video. I'm going to grab my uh, ruler up here, if I can get a hold of it, bring it down. And we're going to measure this length right there. And you'll notice that that's 5.5. And if I go over here, you notice it's, well, it's supposed to be 11. So this is 5.5, and this is 11, which means that this larger one is twice as large as this one. Now, what that means is every single detail on the large drawing is two times bigger than the same detail on the small diagram. So, a large one, I just told you that, a diagram which is an enlargement or reduction of another diagram, we call that a scale diagram. Right. And we use the word diagram because it's the same picture, but the word scale means that it's proportional, right? Okay, let's look at this one. Now what I'd like you to do is we're going to take and find out whether or not these two are proportional to each other. So I'd like you to measure the length and the width of both of these um, rectangles here. So pause the recording and do that. Okay, so let's take a look at the small one. My small one is 4. My larger one is 7. 4 and 7. Okay, so let's take a look at the length. Ratio length 1. There we go. 40 to 70. Now you notice that I used uh, centimeters here, but he, I, my calculations are in millimeters. So the 70 divided by 4 ratio is 1.75. Now let's talk about the the uh, width. I guess the, I used the width would have been the, the, the other way up and down. Kind of getting my terminology a little mixed up here, but that's okay. So if I take and measure this here width, because it's the width of a rectangle, it's 2. And if I measure this width right here, it's 3. So I've got a 2 and a 3 here. So now to find the ratio, remember I've still got to have the same, uh, the same uh, diagrams on the top and the same diagrams on the bottom. So I've got 30 millimeters or 3 centimeters on the top and 20 millimeters or 2 centimeters on the bottom. And 3 divided by 2 is 1.5. Okay. So the question is, are these proportional? Right? They don't. They don't look proportional, but or maybe they do to you. I'm not sure. Right? But in order to find out, you've got to find this number right here and this number right here. If they were proportional, these have to be the same. Since they're not, I can say that these ones are not proportional. 
Now, the reason we have to know if something's proportional is for later on in our other lessons. Because we're going to be able to calculate the, uh, the sizes of one of them knowing the information given on, on the other one, so uh, on the first one. So that's why they have to be proportional. If they're not proportional, we can't do that. So this is why our first test is always, are they proportional? So this ratio that we've been calculating, this number right here, this 1.75 and this 1.5, has a special name. It's referred to as the scale factor. It's a number that you multiply to find the length of the second figure. Right? So this one here, if you take a look at 1.75, if I multiplied the, the length and the width by 1.75, I would get the same proportional size here. Right? But I don't because this is a different ratio. So the first figure is always called the original. And the second figure is always called the scale diagram, and we have a formula for that. The formula is called scale factor, and that's equal to the length on the scale, that's the original, over, sorry, length on the new one, on the new uh, diagram, and over the length of the original diagram. Now, it can be expressed as a decimal, or it can be expressed as a fraction. Okay, to help you remember the formula uh, of scale factor, that's shortened to SF, scale factor, or just S, and this is always going to be our new object, our new drawing, over our original drawing. So we've got S and an N and an O, so scale factor is equal to the new over the original, so I use the word snow to help out. So if you, you can use that to help you remember the formula, go for it. Now, to find, I want you to find the scale factor of the following diagrams. So for this one here, I want you to measure the base. Okay, so what is the base here and what is the base there? And then I want you to use the formula, the length on the scale diagram, which is right there, divided by the length on the original, right there. And then I want you to find out what the uh, actual measurements are. Okay, so you should be done by now. If you measured the original, you should have gotten six centimeters, right here, six centimeters. That's the, sorry, the scale diagram, six centimeters. If you measure the original, you should get four centimeters. And six divided by four means my scale factor is 1.5. That means that this diagram right here is 1.5 times larger than the original. So we can use this to find out whether or not we're correct. So what I want you to do is I want you to measure the height of this original diagram and multiply it by the scale factor of 1.5 and see if the height actually measures the same, or sorry, it measures the, the new value on your scale diagram. So pause the recording and do that. Okay, so the height of the original diagram. Here's my original diagram. Let's take a look here. I get two, all right? So that's pretty straightforward, two. My scale factor is 1.5. We calculated that previously. So two times 1.5 gives me three. I multiplied by 1.5. Now. If everything is proportional, this height should be 3. And you can see, bang on. Well, a little bit off, but it's, it's close enough. Okay? So, let's take a look at the next one. This is a truss bridge, and uh, it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a side view. And using the scale factor of 2.5, I want you to answer the following questions. So, I want you to tell me what is the size of A, B, just this section right here, okay? Then I want B, E, what's that size on the original, sorry, on, on the new one, and what is, um, what's the third one? I guess it's just the two of them, okay? So I want you to find out, this is the, this here is the original, I want you to find out what the new size is of A, B and the new size of B, E. So pause the recording and do that. Okay, so the first thing we needed to do is to find the length of A, B. So AB is on the bottom here, so I'm going to grab my ruler, come over, and measure that, and it is, you can see, 3.5. So that means that my scale diagram is equal to my original times my, my, uh, my scale factor. So my scale diagram, that's the new one, is going to be 3.5 times the scale factor I've given 2.5. So that means that the new diagram, the scale diagram, should be 8.75 when I measure AB on the new one. Now, doing the other one, this is BE. Just go to the centimeters here. And you see I've got, it's kind of hard to tell there, but it's around 3.6, I think. 
Okay, so we've got original scale diagram is the original tensile scale factor. So my new diagram is going to be 3.6 times 2.5. So BE on the new diagram is going to be 9 centimeters. So you can use the original diagram and the scale factor to find the new size of your new diagram. Okay, so far we've only used enlargements. So what I want to do now is I want to do a reduction. Now, remember, you don't divide when you do a reduction. You're going to still multiply by a scale factor. All the rules still apply. So what I want to do is I want you to find what is the scale factor. Now, the scale factor, again, remember, it's the length on the scale diagram, this one here, the new one, over the length on the original, which is right here. So I'd like you to measure the bases and put the information in here and find out what the scale factor is for these to go from the original down to the scale diagram. So pause the recording and do that. Okay, so length on the scale diagram, that is 3. Okay, length on the original, 4. 3 divided by 4, 0 0.75. So to calculate the scale factor of, of this original down to the scale diagram, this is 0 0.75 times the size of this. So using the scale factor, let's see if we can figure out what the height is going to be. So I want you to measure the height of the original and then use a scale factor to find the height of the new scale diagram. So pause the recording and do that. Okay, so first off I need the height of the original. So using centimeters, I find that that is 8 centimeters. All right. Now, scale factor, we said was 0 0.75, so 8 times 0 0.75 is 6. Right? And it does get smaller because you're multiplying by a number less than 1. Now, if we're correct, this diagram right here should be 6 centimeters tall. So finding out, there you go, 6 centimeters. So we're correct. So if I want to find any dimension on here, I have to measure it on the original and multiply by 0 0.75. Okay, now here's an activity for you. I want you to measure the length of each line segment in the given diagram. This is the original. Use a scale factor of 1.2 to calculate the corresponding lengths for the scale diagram, but then I want you to draw it as close as you can to accurately to scale. Okay, so you're going to have to go and measure all these dimensions first, then use a scale factor, find out what the dimensions are, and then make it larger, like down, like, like down below. So, pause the recording and do your measurements here. All right. Well, let's start with this one right here. Here's my ruler, and I have 2.5. Okay, so going down here, 2.5. My scale factor is 1.2. Remember to find the new diagram. You just multiply the scale fact, the original by the scale factor, which means that this one here, you should have drawn it, and it should have been drawn as 3 centimeters. Okay, let's take a look at this length right here. Can you see the length is 7? So, 7 times 1.2 means that you should have drawn this 8.4 centimeters. Okay, let's try doing the one right here. All right, so I'll grab this. It's easier to do it this way. That is 3. So 3 times 1.2 means that this length should have been 3.6. Now the length here, that is 5.5. So 5.5 times the 1.2 scale factor means that you should have drawn this that size. Okay, now. Moving on to the next height, we've got this one here. So we'll grab a, here's one here. This height here is, oops, I've got to make my room a little bit longer. Okay, so if everything is correct, oh, I'm sorry, what am I doing? I have to measure on this one. So this one here is 4. So 4 times 1.2 means that you should have drawn this one 4.8. And across the bottom, this is 8 centimeters. 
that the original, sorry, the, the scale diagram here should be 8 times 1.2. So on your diagram, you should have got 9.6 centimeters. So this new diagram, the scale drawing, is exactly 1.2 times larger than the original. Well done. All right, now let's get away from the diagrams. A box for packaging Olympic souvenirs is to be changed. The original box has a dimension of 40 centimeters by 20 centimeters by 10 centimeters. For each scale factor below, find the new dimensions. So what I want you to do is I want you to use a scale factor of 2 and find out what the length, width, and height is going to be for each one, or sorry, for each of these three cases. So uh, pause the recording and do the first one and then we'll correct it together. Okay, a scale factor of 2. Now, the original length is 40, so it's going to be 40 times the scale factor of 2, which means that my new diagram, or sorry, I'm do the, the new box is going to have a length of 80. The width is 20 times it by 2, that means my new width of the box is going to be 40 centimeters. And my height is 10 centimeters, multiply it by the scale factor of 2, and you get a height of 20 centimeters. So if I apply a scale factor of 2 to the box right here, I get 80 by 40 by 20. Okay, pause the recording and I'd like you to do both of these please. Okay, so point 8. First thing I would ask in class is, is this an enlargement or is this a reduction? Well since it's less than 1, you're going to have a reduction. So original, original length is still going to be 40. All right. But now I'm multiplying by 0.8, so I'll have 3.2. Sorry, sorry, 32 centimeters. Now the original width was 20. Multiply by 28. Sorry, multiply by 0.8, and you get 16. And the original height, 10 times 0.8, gives you 8 centimeters. So if I did a scale factor of 0.8, I'm going to reduce the size, and it's going to be reduced down to 32 by 16 by 8. A scale factor of 5.5. Again. Same thing happens here. You take your original diagram sizes, you multiply everything by 5.5. 40 times 5.5 is 220. 20 times 5.5 is 110. And 10 by 5.5 is 55. So if I apply a scale factor of 5.5, the new box is going to be 220 by 110 by 55 centimeters. Now, there's a question here I want to ask. Do scale, do scale factors have units? Right? So let's go back just for a second here. And let's assume we're going to try to find the scale factor. Right? We know scale factor is new over the original. Okay? Now, what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to use this one right here. Uh, let's, uh, let's use that one right here. Okay? So my new one was 80 and that was centimeters. And the original one was 40, and that was centimeters. Okay. Now that means my scale factor is equal to 2, which we know because that's what it is right there. But look right here. Centimeters over centimeters. What does anything divided by itself give you? 1. So this really becomes 2 times 1, which is 2. So my units cancel out. You leave me with no units at all. So scale factors do not have any units. They're part of a ratio. It's important to have this, is it important to have the same units in the original and the scale diagram? Well, it can be sometimes and what we're going to do is we're going to assume that because we're using, using really small stuff that it is important to have the same ratios. So if you go to maps and stuff, sometimes it changes because one centimeter on a map can be worth it can be 40 kilometers. So you don't you know want to try to figure out you know how many kilometers 40 you know when your scale factor is like a hundred thousand or something. You don't want to have to try and multiply and do all your your changes of your units. So you can sometimes on maps and stuff you can use the original di uh, units that are there. So let's take a look at your assignment. So yeah, we're done. So take a look and complete the assignment. If you have any questions, let me know. And if not, come in and see me. And we will see you in our next lesson. So take care.